Peace and light. <clears throat> that old guy, Australia, Instagram and YouTube. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification button and you'll know when I'm releasing some new material. I really appreciate your help. We're nearly up to 400 people now, which is a big shift from 10. <laughs> so I'm no influencer, but, you know, I put it all down to uh, Sarah J. Holman and Cafe Lockdown, who both put out videos um, challenging men to stand up. Now, I'm pretty old. I haven't got a lot of standing up to do. But, you know, while I can, I'm going to be a drop in a bucket. And I hope that this encourages more people to become more vocal. And that's really what it's all about. This is not ego-driven. Uh, if you like, watch my earlier videos, you'll know that they're non-professional. They're very, very amateurish, and I'm not that great at it. So, you know, there's no ego in this, let me tell you. So, thank you, Sherry, for sending me the video on the documentary regarding the great uh, reset. Right. I'll be very careful what I have to say here. Now, if you haven't seen that documentary, I'm going to try my best to put the link to the video in the comments below, because I, I can't mention it or put it anywhere else, otherwise I'll just get deleted again. So I'll put it in the comments below. I'll do my best. I, I, I promise you. I'll, uh, if I can't do it, I'll ask someone to help me. The reason I'm doing this is because the video that I was sent on the documentary, uh, which goes for about two hours, and it took me a number of sittings to watch it all, it is one of the best documentaries I think I've ever seen. Plandemic was great. This is brilliant, absolutely brilliant, because it's moving toward the unraveling of the narrative. Now, we know that here in Australia we have MAPS, uh, the Medical Association Professionals, who have now formed, and doctors who before were under AFRA and under GAG orders are uh, now uh, attending these seminars which are being put on and uh, they're coming forward out of the woodwork, doctors and medical professionals, scientists, etc., etc., in Australia. They have been terrified of the repercussions put forward by Scott Morrison's brother, the head of AFRA, on the gag order. Now, I had someone here on the south coast challenge me on the validity of those gag orders by AFRA and insisted in no uncertain terms that I was lying and that did not exist. It was utter rubbish. Out of bullshit. The APRA would never do that and they'd never gag medical professionals. That's just bullshit. The doctors aren't saying anything because there's nothing to say. I'm like, oh, okay. So I got a copy of it. It wasn't that hard. So I got a copy of it. And it is absolutely Hitlerish. It is frightening how APRA have worded this document. No wonder. When you read it, there's absolutely no wonder that. Uh, Doctors were afraid to speak out. And as much as we'd like to point the finger and say, well, if you had, a, we wouldn't be in this position, and it's true, I'm glad they're coming out now. I wish it was earlier, but it, but it, but it hasn't been that way. I'm glad they're coming out now. And they're coming out around the world. Because the same gag order, believe it or not, was placed on all medical professionals in every country through their governments and their governing bodies right round the world. But we didn't know that. Nobody mentioned that on Channel 9. Now, I got in a conversation with a, with a particular friend who said to me, I was explaining that there's an elite group uh, of organisations and companies and people, and it's quite large, that are intent on reshaping the world for their own betterment, not for the betterment of humanity. That's the cover. That's the smoke and mirrors. That's the smoke. That's just a smoke screen. It's for the betterment of themselves. And this person said to me, "That's out of horseshit. It would never happen." And I said, "Why?" I said, "It couldn't happen. People like their freedoms too much." They would get together and they would fight against that. And I'm like, what? what? Where have you been for the last two and a half years? We had freedoms taken away from us by the bucket load. We've had legislations rewritten and changed. We've had legislations implemented, which we don't even know about, over a hundred, that are for future when they bring about the Great Reset. We have legislations implemented in Australia 
and actually it's happening around the world because you need to understand on a global scale they have to introduce the same kind of things in every single country and it's a different way of doing it in some countries it takes a lot to get it through and these legislations involve <clears throat> what they call or here in Australia they're called um, I can't say it COVID uh, officers and they have ultimate power more so than police and they can enter your premises at any time for any particular reason if they so desire and they don't need any kind of paperwork to do that no 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 authority they have all authority so I was speaking to this particular person and I thought wow people are still not joining dots and then I got sent this documentary <coughs> so I'm going to put it in the comments below because that's about the only way the algorithms won't pick it up. I hope. Right? I needed to say to you this, and uh, you've heard this. If you're watching this, and you've heard it, really, I guess. If a guy from the World Economic Forum, to which Australia is a signatory, we belong to the World Economic Forum. We are a part of that group. We are a signed nation. So the leader of that group, who is a private individual, a multi-billionaire private individual backed by the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation, a guy called Klaus Schwab, or as we like to call him, Herr Klaus of the Fourth Reich, that man has an incredible amount of influence and power. He hosts the World Economic Forum every year, has done for years, and he's hosted a program called the World Economic Forum Young Globalists, of which many of those graduates are now in positions of power, which he released a video on, boasting about how so many of his graduates are in political spheres of influence. We're talking Jacinda Ardern, Trudeau, Macron. So there's many, many, many. And we here have a particular government minister who has huge ties to the WEF going back, Mr Hunt. Now, if the head of that organisation gets together with the head of another major world organisation, the United Nations, that is no small thing. When the President of the United Nations, or the Secretary, Antonio Guerres, then has a meeting with that man, then he comes out and has a public press conference. And in that conference, he says these words that he'd met with Klaus Schwab. And he says, quote unquote, we have agreed to bring Agenda 30 forward. If a man says that, then you need to take notice. You can't just wipe that off and go, well, it's just conspiracy. No, this was a public press conference three to five weeks ago. So when he says that, it has meaning. You can't just dismiss that and write it off as nothing. So you need to say to yourself, well, what's Agenda 30? What is that? I am still amazed how many people have failed to research Agenda 2030. They, they have no idea what it means, what it involves, what it entails and encapsulates. They don't know. They have absolutely no idea, yet it is common public knowledge. You can go and Google it and look at it and look through it. And it reads beautifully until you look at the fine print. Now, I got sent some other disturbing information about biospheres here in Australia. And these are incredibly important issues that are coming about. I got sent the public release of Goulburn's Smart City Network program for 2025. And reading that was frightening enough. Now, as I've said to people, if, if evil didn't exist, evil did not exist, and these programs came up and they said, this is what we're doing moving forward, you would think to yourself, well, that sounds pretty good. I mean, technology, what it is, assuming we didn't have EMF and 5G, etc., 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 we had, everything was safe, right? No evil. You would go, this sounds great. 
fantastic. <clears throat> but when you know the darkness behind it all, when you know the agenda 2030 that they're pushing towards, when you know what their ultimate goal is, reduction of humanity, and a centralization of food production, manufacture and dis distribution, when you know what their goals are, because I tell you, it's in plain sight, it's there, if you know that, then you know that nothing about this is good. Nothing. There is absolutely nothing about this that is good in any way. I'll rest my case. Here in Australia, we now have the idea the CSIRO has come out and said that they can introduce the jibby jabby into kale, which is not a bad thing because I don't eat kale anyway. But I'm just saying, they can put this into anything. Now we know that they're jibby jabbying cows. Now we had an unverified report from a farmer's wife who came out and said that they were forced to in jibby jabby their herd and 35 of them died pretty much straight away. Now if that was the case, there's a problem. So then you're going to have to look for organic meats and organic farmers, and they're going to be phased out. They'll be targeted. They will be targeted. We know in Victoria, Daniel Andrews passed legislation which allows him to go onto hobby farms and confiscate animals and product. So there's a lot more to this than meets the eye, and you're not, if you're not taking notice, you'll miss out. Peace and light, the old guy Australia. Catch you soon.